song says, say, I need you. I need you. You need me. You need me. We're all a part of God. Say, stand with me. Agree. We're all a part of God. Say, it is his will. That every need be supplied. You are important, and I need you. Yes, you are important to me. I need you to survive. We can all sing that together. You can say, say, I need you, I need and you need me. You need me. We're all a part of God. Say, stand with me, stand if a few of y'all would agree. agree We're all a part of God. Tell your neighbor, it is his will. It is his will. That every need. there we need a few of y'all to help us sing that part just tell your neighbor I need you I need tell them you. you need me need and we're all a part of God we need y'all to sing that with us stand with me, stand with me. agree we're all a part of God let them know it is his will that every need be supplied that every need, that every need be you are important, and I need you are important to me. Oh, did to survive. We'll do that one more time. You can let your neighbor know. Just tell them, tell your neighbor, I need you. Now look at them, tell them, you need me. We're all a part of God. Ask your neighbor to stand with me. Agree. We're all a part of God. Tell them, it is his will that every need be supplied. That every need You are Tell them I need you Oh yes, yes you are You're important to me And I need And the next part simply says it says that I pray for you, you pray for me, I love you, I need you to survive, I won't harm you with words from my mouth, I love you, I need you to, we can all say that I pray for you, I pray, you pray for me. Say, I love you, and I need you to survive. The song says, I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you, I need. Says, I pray for you, you pray for me. I love you, and I need you to survive. Let your neighbor know that I won't harm you I won't harm with words. I love you, and I need you to survive. We 
you can say that. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you too. Tell them I won't harm you with words from my mouth, my mouth, my mouth, my mouth. I pray you pray for me. I love you. And tell them that I need you to survive. I need you. Tell them I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love Say, I pray for you, you pray for me, I love you, I need you to tell them I won't harm you with words, I love you, and I need you to survive. Let your neighbor know, ask him if they would tell them, I'll pray for you, you pray. that I won't harm you I won't harm you with words from my mouth my mouth my mouth my mouth I pray for you yeah 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 you pray for me I love you I need you to tell them I won't harm you with words to survive. If y'all can help us say that right there. Tell them I pray for you. You pray for me. We can tell them I love you and I need you to survive. Tell them that I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you and I need you to survive. Just one more time all over the room. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need, I need, come on, with words from my mouth. I love you, and I need you to survive. The song right there says, It is His will, it is His will, that every need be supplied. You are important to me. And I need you to survive. I need you to survive. We tell them, you are important to me. You are important. And I need you to survive. We can stay right there. You To survive, I need you to survive. Good morning, church family. I would like to read a poem about godly men, but before I do, I would like to um, recognize the godly man in my life. Um, all of you all know that my dad has a really dangerous and frustrating job, and it has been really, really hard to be a child of a police officer. But one thing that has helped me worry less is that I know that my dad is a praying man and every single morning. <laughs> it's been times recently where he's walked out of the house at three o'clock in the morning and I've been so worried, you know, that he won't come home. But one thing that has helped me worry less is that I see him opening his Bible every single morning. I see him going into prayer. So I just wanted to say thank you, Dad, and thank you to all the amazing men at Pleasant Green that are guiding me. God took the strength of a mountain, the majesty of a tree, the warmth of a summer sun, the calm of a quiet sea, the generous soul of nature, the comforting arm of night, the wisdom of the ages, the power of the eagle's flight, 
the joy of a morning in spring, the faith of a mustard seed, the patience of eternity, the depth of a family need. Then God combined these qualities. When there was nothing more to add, he knew his masterpiece was complete, and so he called it Dad.
chips are now
Let's give God the praise. Is there anybody in here that thanks God for what God has done in their lives? Touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, I will bless God at every time and at every season. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And right now, I feel like telling the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just believe in praise. Oh, hallelujah. We bless God for, we bless God for this choir. Amen. Amen. I am just a living witness that when you give young people something to do, in the house of God. So we bless God for them. Uh, this choir has found their niche, and I pray that you stick with us, amen. We're in a season of transition, amen. Amen, we're in a season of transition. And I share this with you, brothers and sisters, transition and change is not always something that's comfortable okay but you have to understand that change is inevitable amen uh, it's not their fault I asked them to give me a little more volume amen I know they understand the volume better than I do amen uh, I, I bless God for all of you all who have accommodated me, let's pray for just a moment and then we'll jump into the word of God. Now, God, we praise you. We praise you for uh, being God and being God all by yourself. Thank you for these who are God's people. God, we thank you for the leaders. God, we thank you for the ecclesiastical male men who sit behind me and who help me preach the word of God. God, we thank you for the people who serve behind the scenes. That lets me know that there are people here willing to serve and not wanting to be in the spotlight. We thank you for them. God, we thank you for the young people now God and we thank you for the seasoned saints and God now we stand in your presence in the magnificence of this sacred space to preach the word of God now God I ask that the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength my Redeemer, let us all say, Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, I will that you would look with me in the old canon of the Bible, the Old Testament. We look at Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Then we'll read verses 1 through 6. At some point, we'll have it on the screen for you, amen. I thank God for those of you who give God's word reverence. And perhaps if you don't have any ailings in your body, a knee or hip pains or what have you, I will that you would stand. Amen. The word of God for the people of God comes in Nehemiah 4. 
1 through 6 in this wise, but it came to pass that when Sanballat, somebody say the hater, heard that we were building the wall, he was mad and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these weak, feeble Jews do? Will they fortify themselves? And I can hear laughter while he's talking. Will they sacrifice? <laughs> Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of this rubbish which are burned? Now, Tobiah the Amorite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, this was another hater. He said, If a fox go up, he shall knock down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out for before thee. For they have proved thee in anger before the builders. So this is where the tide turns. The historian says, so built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. And this is the part that I want you to hear. For the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. And just for a minute or better, I want to use as a framework for this text, let's have a mind to work. Let's have a mind to work. I hate to bother you about your neighbor, but I think this is so important that you bother your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, and I know if somebody's sitting by somebody, perhaps they're not. Just touch them, say, neighbor, let's have a mind to work. Brothers and sisters, as we look at history, we look at May 4th, 2007. There was a small town of Greensburg, Kansas. A tornado battered this community with a violent gale force wind. It was reported that a EF5 twister swept through Greensburg with winds gusting up to about 200 miles per hour. It essentially annihilated this small Midwestern town. It was disclosed uh, that the tornado injured more than 60 people killed 13 others, and it left the town in a complete disarray. 
In other words, my brothers and sisters, this win did a bad job on the people of God. My brothers and sisters, if we look at this report in Greensburg, Kansas, it was declared as a disaster area. Over 95% of the structures in the town were destroyed and the remaining 5% of the structures that somehow withstood the storm were seriously damaged. The town, as I share with you brothers and sisters, the town was in shambles. Their schools were torn to shreds. Their homes were blown asunder. Their church even had some work that they had to do because the winds of life even attacked the church. The city was in a ruin. The people were devastated. Nevertheless, the story of Greensburg, Kansas is a resilient one because despite being wiped out, blown away, and tossed from side to side, the people decided that we are resilient and we trust in a resilient God and we can stand and weather this storm. My brothers and sisters, I'm about to shout already. This happened because the people who trusted God, they trusted God so much so that they believed that he can rebuild them even in a place of disparity. Nehemiah, if we look at the text, he began to rebuild where his ancestors worshipped. Brothers and sisters, and if we look at Greensburg, Greensburg is the most energy efficient town now in the world because they got to a place where they trusted God and they rebuilt where they were. I'm about to shout before I get to my message. I'm trying to tell you that whatever you have experienced in your life, whatever thing that you have come up against, God is able to rebuild you even in that circumstance. My brothers and sisters, at this point in Judah's historical account, uh, the report was grim. Jerusalem, much like Greenberg, was in shambles. The walls of Jerusalem had been destroyed. Their protective barriers were disabled. Jerusalem was defenseless. It was declared a disaster area. Nevertheless, as we enter into the wreckage of the text, Nehemiah is now preparing to rebuild the wall. He is contemplating construction for Christendom. And I want you to know that God is with you if ever you contemplate construction for the kingdom of God. I'm about to shout in here by myself. But I do it all the time on the edge of my bed. So it's all right if you don't say amen, but I'm going to tell them thank you. God, brothers and sisters, he's gotten to a place uh, where he's trusted God. Nehemiah is looking toward God. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, I believe he heard the prophet Jeremiah say, I will build you up and not tear you down. You see, God exhibits his apex in the midst of our wrecks. Let, let me tell somebody that right quick. God 
exhibits his apex. God shows up in the midst of your wrecks. In other words, I'm going to tell somebody this right now. God shows up in the middle of your messiness. Touch your neighbor. You can be petty. You can be messy. But God shows up. I'm finna get out of here. As we prepare to explore this particular pericope, I've discovered several pillars of truth that abide in the text, and I'll share them with you and I'll bid you adieu. The first detail that we must recognize as we seek to develop a mind to work is, first, bear in mind that there will always be ridicule of God's work. Y'all with me today? They'll always be real. In other words, whenever you make up in your mind, whenever you decide that you're doing something good for the Lord, there'll always be ridicule, Deacon Gray. There'll always be ridicule of a good work. And there is construction considered for the kingdom of God. Count on conflict to come. I don't want y'all to think that I'm going to get here and everything going to be peaches and cream. Understand that perhaps because the kingdom of God is at stake, and because we want to build upon what God is doing at this particular place, there is some conflict that is inevitable. If you look at verse 1 of our text, conflict comes through opposition and ridicule of God's people. Brothers and sisters, like I shared with you, God's people will always have enemies, and in this case, the enemy was Sanballat. The text says in verse 1 that Sanballat was wroth. In other words, he was angry, he was upset, and in our 21st colloquial language, he was peeved off. I wish I could talk to y'all like I talked to my wife. He was mad, and as a result, brothers and sisters, he began to chastise and ridicule the people of God. I want to share this with you before I press on. Ridicule is a tool used by ignorant folk who are filled with jealousy. In other words, brothers and sisters, when you're doing a mighty work for the Lord, Brothers and sisters, you're going to have some ignorant folk that ridicule you. They're going to chastise you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to say everything against you to stop the work of the Lord. This is a prime example of what we call, I know back in the day, they called them antagonists. Uh, another period in our history, they called them jive turkeys. <laughs> Is there anybody that lived during that period? Uh, I know in that period of antagonists, that's probably my granddaddy. But there are some people that's around that remember that word jive turkey. But when I fast forward it to th 2017, let me stop off in the 90s first. There were player haters. But let me fast forward to 2017. Brothers and sisters, when you're doing a mighty work for the Lord, the haters will show up. You, you, you gonna have some haters. But I'm so glad uh, the, the theology of Jay-Z says, you got to get off. You got a dust. Uh, I guess I'm the only one listening to the radio in here. I'm the only one listening to CDs. You got, you got to get 
the dust off your shoulders. In other words, you, you, you got to get to a place and a position in your life that you don't care what the haters are saying. L let, let me revisit another 21st century colloquial term. You all know Cat Williams, don't you? I know he ain't got his head screwed on right. But brothers and sisters, he has a comedy bit and he says that a hater's job is to hate. I got somebody that watched it. Somebody said that I ain't gonna punch out. He said a hater's job is to hate. And then he says this, you ought to let them hate. But brothers and sisters understand that you have to allow the hater to hate because God will do like David and make your hater somewhat like a footstool. There we go. I wish I had some help in here. You need haters in your life. You need haters to laugh at what you got going on. You need haters in your life because when God puts a hater in your life, what he also does is put a footstool there. <laughs> Sam Ballot, he started laughing. Look at the text. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all think I'm just a jive turkey. <laughs> Sam Ballot said, do you really think you can transform this rubble into a great wall overnight? He was, he was laughing. At, he was checking them. Sam Ballot had a PhD. He had a player-hating degree. He started laughing at them. And you know, brothers and sisters, I want to I wanna pause for just a second. He asked them in such a way that each one of his re questions required a negative answer. I, I want to share this with you today, Pleasant Green, this is free of charge. You can identify a hater in your midst because every question they ask you requires a negative answer. Somebody still saying, Pastor, I need you to unpack that for me. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, you can identify a hater by what they ask you. In other words, they know what's going on in your life, but they, some, they say something like this. They say, you ain't graduated yet. That's a hater. A hater asks you, you ain't found you a husband yet. That, that, that's a hater. You ain't paid your credit down yet. That's a hater. I just want, if you see them, point them out. Brothers and sisters, all I want you to do is understand how to identify your haters. That's what Sam Ballot was doing. He was laughing. He says, you ain't built up the kingdom of God yet. And if you do build it up, won't a fox run up against the wall and knock it down? In other words, brothers and sisters, I'm just saying that if we get to a point and a place where we, we're rebuilding the ministry here at Pleasant Green, and we are up on the wall, and we're inviting people in, and we're allowing the young people to sing, and we're wearing collars and jeans in the church house. But if somebody starts saying, I wish I had some help here here. I wish I just had one witness here. If somebody starts laughing at the way we're doing things. <laughs> touch your neighbor, say, you ain't Sam Ballad, are you? text proposes that the unbelievers looked at what they had to work with. You know, sometimes unbelievers have a different way of looking at things. Unbelievers, they'll look at what they have to work with and they don't look at who works on your behalf. I'm about to shout by myself. Sometimes they look at the fact that you have stage four cancer. 
but they don't look at the fact that God is able to heal all manners of sickness and disease. Some unbelievers might look at the fact that the building is old and the paint is falling off, but they don't look at the fact that God reaches down to every and all generations. I wish I had some help in here. Brothers and sisters, you've got to get to a place where you trust God and you trust him only. And I want to say this, the world, they, they cannot see nor understand the unlimited reservoir of resources that believers have because they can't see, but they ridicule. What the, word, uh, what the world saw as a scrawny, scraggly, second-class shepherd boy, God saw David as the next king of Judah a man after God's own heart. I, I, I wish I had just one more witness here. What the world saw as a senseless, psychotic lunatic who built a boat on dry land with not a drop of water in sight, but Noah saw what God, what the Lord was dispatching, the rain that would fall upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, We've got to understand that uh, we see things just a little bit different than how God sees it. As a matter of fact, Paul says that, uh, that we don't walk by sight, but we, we've got to get to a point to where well, we walk by faith. I'm out of here now, but I've got some stories to tell you that you've got, you've got to get to a point where you trust in the Lord. I remember a story in the Bible where thousands of people came to hear the word of the Lord. And his disciples said, Lord, how, how can we feed all of these people? Oh, Lord, but he took the little fish and he took the five loaves of bread do I have any help in here he took two fish and five loaves of bread have I got any help in here and he fed 5,000 people Oh Lord, and I want you to know what the Bible says after you understand that there will be a ridicule of God's work. You've got to understand how to respond in the right way. He didn't. I got five more minutes. I just want to make sure you hear this. After Sam Ballot, because I know this is critical to black folks, we respond. Yeah. Our response ain't real pretty. Brothers and sisters, what's happened in the text? He didn't get upset. Because sometimes, and I have to catch myself, when a hater gets in my midst because I'm still human, I might respond like Peter. Are there any Peters? In? Don't raise your hand. But thank God for Peters. But what I'm sharing with you, brothers and sisters, I, I might not respond like the Lord. But we've got to respond like Nehemiah. 
He didn't come down off the wall. He didn't stop his work. He didn't put up one of those fingers. Y'all know like when somebody cuts you off in traffic. He didn't put that finger up. But what he did, he began to pray. And I want you to know that when you're working on a building for the Lord, you've got to keep on praying. Because Satan uh, wants to knock down what you're doing. And I'm going to my clothes now. But I remember my son when we were playing in the living room. He began to knock down, oh Lord, uh, all of the blocks that I was stacking on his behalf. Y'all not praying with me. He began to knock down all the blocks that I had stacked up on his behalf. And every time he knocked them down, he would begin to laugh. And oh Lord, I got frustrated. I said, why? you're knocking down the blocks that I'm building for you tell your neighbor that sometimes when people don't understand what you're doing they'll knock down the blocks that you are building that will compensate oh, oh Lord that will help somebody else but what I did I kept on building and he kept on knocking them down do I have any witnesses here sometimes you gotta keep on you gotta keep on building even though you got enemies that's knocking down your work oh Lord but what I did I moved him out of this building and I moved him oh, I moved him into another room because when I moved him out of my presence and I put him into somebody else's presence I was able to complete what I was doing what I'm trying to tell you right now that sometimes you got to put those haters uh, into the presence of God uh, so that you can finish uh, what you're doing. Uh, I'm in here by myself. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I'm so glad uh, that I know the Lord. Uh, he's able uh, to complete in me uh, a good work. Uh, you ought to keep on building uh, and you ought to keep on uh, and stay on the wall is there anybody here that's building for the Lord the Bible says that you want to play aside every weight that so easily besets you and you ought to run you ought to run with patience the race that is set before you and I know an old hymn says I'm on the battlefield for my Lord is there anybody here that's on the battlefield for your Lord Lord, I once uh, was on the battlefield uh, and I told him uh, that I'd serve him uh, until I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm so glad uh, I serve a God uh, who died. Uh, he died for my sins. Uh, he died but he didn't stay there he died he died for my sins he died they hung him on the cross they pierced him in the side he died he died he died but early 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 
with all power. Do you know the Lord? He has all power and he can do what no other power except Holy Ghost power is able to do. I know he's all right. Grab your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. I'm gone now, but oh, oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now, oh. The door is open. I'm sorry, I kind of got out of my element. You may be used to lectures, but this lecture kind of hoops a little bit. The door is open. God is opening the door for you. Brothers and sisters, we got a wall to build. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, we got a wall to build. We got a wall to build. We want you to stay on the wall. The door is open. I, there's, God is talking to somebody in here right now. You don't have a church home. Somebody just came here because they was curious about that little skinny boy who's preaching from Memphis. God is talking to you. He's knocking on your door. You need a church home. Brothers and sisters, I'm so glad to see saints you say this. He says, you need a savior. You need a savior. You need a savior. In times like these, you need a savior. Y'all, if you don't have a church home, think about it. I ain't pressuring you, but you ought to think about it. You ought to think about it and come to God because God is calling you. He's inviting you to the table of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a great big gigantic hand of praise.